Today we're going to be uh, modeling up a, uh, a slot. Uh, this is kind of cut on a uh, fourth axis milling machine. And you can see it's cut with a uh, bull nose cutter. And I've got some really nice, good looking surfaces in here. You know, I've got an actual flat on the bottom, which is actually a cylindrical face. Uh, and then my fillets and everything come up really nice. Uh, you can model this using the uh, the wrap command, but there's some, some benefits to doing this as a, a separate model and then kind of using a combine at the very end. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll start with a new uh, part template and we'll just start sketching on the front plane. Just draw out two circles and we'll dimension them. So this is kind of my outer surface of the uh, cylinder and then this is going to be my depth of cut here. So I'm going to dimension it between the two circles so that way uh, if I change one, if I change this guy to 5 inches, then the depth of cut actually moves along with it. And I'm going to be modeling using uh, surfaces. So let's go to the surface. We're just going to do extrude. And this is going to be the length of my little cylinder here. And we'll just make it 8. Alright, next I need to make my, uh, my path for my slot. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll just sketch on the top plane. We'll go look normal to that. And I'm going to go ahead and create a line, just a, a construction line. We'll change them in just a bit. And then this is actually going to be uh, my projected curve uh, coming off of it. So I'll put a couple dimensions on here real quick. Make that 135. And the only trick to this uh, method, doing it on here, is I got to make sure that I don't go off past the end of that part. Um, I'll show you why in just a bit. So change that guy to construction. We'll finish out of the sketch. Uh, I can't use the split command for creating this curve. I have to do actually projected split. Um, I'd have to actually go all the way past that face to, in order to do it. So I'm going to use the uh, under curve projected. And this is going to be a sketch on a face. So I just need to select the face. And there's actually two uh, solutions for this. So there's a little checkbox for reverse projection. Uh, I want this up on the top. So that's correct. We'll go ahead and say OK. And we're ready to go. So you can kind of see I've got a nice little curve. Uh, it's completely cylindrical and it's constrained to that original sketch. You know, going straight down on that. So that looks pretty good. Uh, next, I'd like to radiate this little edge or this curve off of here. Um, but if I use radiate, so if we go to surfaces, radiate, you'll notice that it doesn't allow me to I pick on the top plane for my reference. You can see it, I can I can try and pick the curve, but it's not actually going to do it. I need some type of an edge. Uh, the edge actually shows tangency, uh, and I like to use the uh, the radiate surface, but I have to create an edge first. So to do this, I'm just going to do a, a sweep. So I need to create a, a new sketch on that right side plane, and I'm just going to draw a line through here. Make sure it's horizontal. And then the endpoint, I'm going to pick on that endpoint, hold out control, pick on that curve, and do a pierce constraint. That way it's at the very endpoint and it's going through that curve. And then you can dimension it if you like. It doesn't really matter what this, this thickness is. Just make it one. And that gives me my uh, path so I can uh, do a sweep. So I go into a swept surface. This is my profile. This is my path. Now the problem that I have here is that this sweep right now uh, is not axially aligned. So if I turn on my little uh, temporary axis there, so I can see the center axis, and then the trick is kind of line up the sides of this, make sure they're kind of up and down, vertical there. And then as I start to rotate this around, you can see at the, when I very first start, it's axially aligned. But as I start to rotate about this cylinder, you can see that I can see both the top and the bottom part of the cylinder. So the the issue is that you would actually have to be cutting and rotating your tool at the same time. That's that's not very good. So uh, we just want to keep the tool straight up and down towards the axis of the part. So to do that, I'm going to change this path alignment type in the sweep and change it to uh, a directional vector. And then I'm going to select on a plane. I'm going to pick on this front plane. So you see that little front plane there? And what that does is it makes it to where every edge or every surface that this kind of goes through notice that now it's axially aligned. If I rotate around you can kind of see where that that center uh, between the top and the bottom of the surface is actually moving. 
So this is really close, pretty much like a radiate surface. Almost the exact same thing. Okay, so I go ahead and say, okay, I've got a good looking surface in there. And uh, I am going to go ahead and use the radiate command just so you can kind of see how we can, we can go about that. So I'm going to do insert, surface, radiate. And I'm just going to radiate it. Um, I got to pick on the same plane I want it uh, aligned with. And then we can select on that edge. That edge is a little bit hard, so let me turn off my top surface body. So there, now I can pick on that edge. And I'll just go up uh, about a quarter of an inch. All right. And then I'm going to turn off the sweep just for a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to extend the radiate surface. And I want to make sure it goes down past the uh, the bottom part of my, my tool where it's hitting. So that looks actually mighty fine. Now I want to turn on the sweep surface just so you can kind of see what these things look like. And you see all the interference that's going on there? And this is the, the tessellation. So I can pretty much tell that both my uh, radiate surface and my surface sweep are pretty much dead on. You know, probably about to seven or eight decimal places, maybe even further there they're right on. I'm getting this nice little interference on there. Um, so I could actually have used the surface sweep or I could use the radiate. Uh, for this one I'm just going to keep on going on with the radiate. So I'm going to turn off my uh, surface sweep and I'm just going to use the radiate surface. So now that I have the radiate surface I need my uh, tool width. So I'm just going to do an offset surface and we're going to say I've got a, a half inch tool so I need a quarter inch offset on this side and I'm going to offset the center again and I'm going to flip it so it's on the other side. So this actually gives me uh, a very distinct center of my of my tool. Uh, we'll go ahead and turn off the uh, the center surface there. And now the only thing we have to left to do is to kind of trim it up and clean it up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my inside surface and I'm just going to use the loft command and I don't have any profiles or anything like that. This is a surface. So I'm just going from one edge to another. And it's going to make a nice little straight straight loft. So we'll do the exact same thing on the other side. Oops. Let me clear that selection set out of there. There we go. That looks good. So they look all right. And next I just got to knit those up. And there's a couple little gaps in there, so we'll just zip up the gaps there. And I want to merge them so it's all one surface body there. So you'll notice I have one surface knit. Okay, we'll go ahead and turn on our inside and outside surfaces. So next I just need to trim these guys up. So we'll go get trim surface. And I'm going to try and do a, uh, instead of a standard trim, I'm going to try and do mutual. And mutual is where you can select multiple surfaces for the, uh, the trimming surface and then you can of course select the ones that you want to keep or remove. I'm going to go ahead and say keep and I'm going to keep the inside of that. Look straight down through there and pick the inside and then we'll rotate around and pick on the bottom part of that. Hopefully that will give me my, my three surfaces. There we go. So then we can, uh, it looks like it's an enclosed shape, we can knit this into a solid hopefully. So we'll pick on that and it does, it gives us the option to try and form a solid. So go and accept that. And it looks like it can't do that, of course, because they're already knitted to the same surface, so I need to use the thicken. Sorry about that. So I'm going to try and create a uh, solid volume from the enclosed volume. There we go. So now I've got actually a solid body out here. Alright, and with the solid body, uh, now it's going to be really easy to actually make uh, my end geometry from that bull nose, uh, the bull nose cutter. So we'll just use the fillet command. So I'll use a uh, full round fillet. And there's a little trick to this. If I pick on the face, you'll see on my cursor I can hit the right click and that will actually take me to the next selection set there. So I can quickly easily go from one selection set to the other. So it looks good. We'll go ahead and do another full round fillet on the other side. So left click, right click, left click, right click, left click, right click, and I'm done. Alright, and then the bull nose actually has a, uh, 
uh, a fillet on the bottom. This is going to be a constant radius. We'll go ahead and make a quarter of an inch. Oh, that's a little too far. There we go, 1875. And this is pretty much what my tool is going to look like in the path and how it's going to cut around there. So that's pretty much the hard part of it. The easy part now is uh, let's go back to the original sketch and we'll just show it. And I'm going to do a, uh, go ahead and pre select the sketch and I'll just do a, a regular extrude. I'm going to do selected contours and just pick on the outside of that contour. So I got a solid block and I don't want to merge the result. I want these to stay, stay completely separate. So we'll go ahead and say OK. So I've got two solid bodies and then I just need to use the combine command. So insert features, combine, and I want to do subtract. This is my main body. This is the body I want to subtract. And I'll pick it out of the browser. There we go. We'll say OK. And now I've got my nice little looking cut. And all of these faces, whenever I look straight down at the face, let me kind of line it up a little bit. So I kind of made these guys vertical on the sides. And you can see that each of these faces, as they're going down, they are completely lined up uh, axially. So I've got some really good surfaces uh, to machine. So hope you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot.